In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John 1 verse 1. Now, the first book of the Bible, Genesis, first chapter, the Bible says God created. In the beginning, God created. But in verse 3, first book, first book, Rasabula Bible, we already hear about the power of the word, the power of the spoken word, the power of the time, because the Bible says, God said, and you guessed it right, there was. After he said, there was. That already tells us the power of the tongue, the power of your spoken words. Already God emphasizes that power that has been granted to us. I mean, Harvard, Ziela, the serpent, the ability to talk, and not everything can talk, by the way. It's just as humans. It's because he showed us his character through us, his character when he speaks, things happen. Luena, when you speak, things happen. Speaking of which, this video today is about how I jokingly got myself into trouble. I was trying to get myself out of trouble, but then I got myself in trouble, got myself in a whole accident. I need to show you my setup today so that you'll understand what is happening in my life right now. Cue the video while I get my notes ready. Right. One of the most important functions amongst others of the tongue is speech. One of the silliest things I can do with my tongue is this. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I feel like I can make an M or a W. Anyway, your words or your tongue have so much power. Don't take them for granted. Your words have, actually they have a physical effect on your well-being. I'll give you an example. If I send you a text right now and I say, you are the most amazing person in the whole wide world. Your face and your body automatically reacts like, oh, and in the same manner or in the same minute or in the same environment, then I send you a message that says, you are the most horrible, horrendous, horrific person. <laughs> your body will react. Exactly. Your words have so much power. You have to be so conscious of what comes out of your mouth and what you consume in because what is inside of you is what's going to come out. Before we get to how my words got me in there, as you know, I am going to share the word. We are children of God. This is my Bible. I am what the Bible says I am. I can do. We are children of God and we move by the word. We move by the word of God. We are driven by the word of God. So, it was very hard for me to come up with this particular conversation because I couldn't do the power of the words, the tongue, without getting into the power of the mind. And once you get into the power of the mind, people then want to start overanalyzing the scientific behind it. Like, what do you mean my words can make me? Like, what do you mean? That doesn't make biological or scientific sense. And that's because it's not supposed to. A lot of these things that we are spiritual beings, are we not? We are. We are spiritual beings. A lot of the things that we go through and we do are spiritually led. So we can't explain them in the physical or in the scientific because some of them are just spiritually led. The, the, the saying that says everything has ears, how is that biologically or scientifically true? It doesn't make sense. They're all just spiritual. But scientifically speaking, when we say your words have power, my sister once taught one day, I don't know what her message was about, but she mentioned something called the reticular. Was it reticular? Reticular activating system. Now, in the terms of terms, the reticular activating system, it is the physiological instinct. In simple English, it is a bundle of nerves that sits in your brainstem. And its job is to regulate behavioral arousal, consciousness, 
and motivation. Behavioral arousal, consciousness, and motivation. Basically, what you put your mind to, you actively pursue. You, it becomes your focal point. It becomes your main attraction, what you start thinking about a lot. So when we wanted to buy our car, all we could see after we had said we were going to buy this car was that car. Because now subconsciously, what you want to attract becomes your expectation. So your mind follows your expectation. That's the scientific side of things. But spiritually, the tongue or the power of your words started in Genesis. Because if God could say, let there be light and there was light, and the Bible says we are made in his image, we have the same character. We have the same ability to use our words to bring things forth. But it starts where? In here. If you think about it, you declare it, you start to experience it. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the mind, the mouth speaks. So what is in here interprets what's going to come out of there. They, they intertwine these things, the mind and the tongue. That's why it was hard for me to come up with this thing without touching on the power of the mind. But I want to talk about the power of the tongue. <laughs> because even if you think it, if you don't confess it, because the Bible says the power of life and death lies in your tongue. So even if you think it, if you don't confess it, you really can't expect it. Because what? Your mind follows your expectation. Take for instance, right now, on our phones. Since I've started working out, hardly any on any social media platform, that's all I see. Because it has detected, hurry, that's all I want to see. And also, my mind subconsciously is focusing just on that. But what does the Bible say about the tongue? These three stood out for me. First Peter 3 verse 10 says, for whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. So if you want to see that, speak it. If you don't want to see it, shut it. That's what the Bible says. You will be what you speak. You will be what you think. Ephesians 4.29 says, do not let any, and I mean any, oh, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. In Matthew 15, 11, it says, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. But what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiled them. Now, there's a scenario that this other guy I was watching um, made about how there was a person who was squeezing an, an orange and was expecting apple juice to come out of an orange. And the guy was like, why would you expect um, apple juice out of an orange? And it's because I'm using an apple mechanic what, 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 what. Uh, but that doesn't matter because what is in this fruit is orange. Therefore, what is going to be squeezed out of this fruit will be orange juice. It doesn't matter who squeezes it. So even with us, it doesn't matter how much I on you. If what is inside of you is negativity, it is... Um, and that's all that's going to come out. So that's why this, the scripture says here, what goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. But what comes out, you are basically what you speak and you will become what you speak. You are basically what you consume and you will become what you consume. If the only thing that you consume about marriage is that all men cheat, darling, I have news for you. <laughs> But if what you want to believe about marriage is that it works and it's beautiful and, and, and God is there and God will, then darling, I have news for you. 
You are exactly what you speak. One thing I love about God is that he is faithful to keep his promise. There's a scripture in the book of Hebrews 10, 23, and it says, let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we confess, to the hope we speak, to the hope we affirm, because God can be trusted to keep his promises. I've realized that God has linked his miracle power to the words that you speak. Mm -hmm. You speak it, he creates it, he forms it, he performs it. Like I said, the scripture in the book of Proverbs, the power of life and death lies in your own tongue. One time, a long time ago, 2015, Pastor Sibui speaks on a very powerful sermon, powerful, and then he quotes a line, he says, it doesn't matter what they say, including God, until you say it. Hey, when I go and I quote that line, yo, people are like, what do you mean? What do you? I was like, guys, the power of life and death lies in your tongue. Some of the things, they lie in you. They need you. They need your hands. They need your, they need your faith. If we are um, declaring things over your life, but your mind and your mouth are not comprehending what we are saying, then speak it and watch it happen. One of my favorite scriptures in the book of Mark 11, 23. When Jesus says to the disciples, you of little faith, you can say to this mountain, be put aside, move, and it will happen. And he gives a condition and he says, but you have to really, 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 really believe it. Have faith and have no doubt and have no doubt inside of you that this thing can happen. But what did he say? He started with faith. He started with the tongue. He started with saying, you can say to this mountain, move and it will be moved. He started with the power of the tongue. He didn't start with the faith. He started with the power of the tongue. You can tell it. What do you want today? What do you want the Lord to do for you today? Speak it. There's so much power in your tongue. The Bible says a thousand may fall at our side, 10,000 may die around us, and then one or two die around you and you start going, hmm, maybe, no, no darling. You have power in that small tool. It's that tool that can make an L, <laughs> an M. That small tool has so much power to build who you want to be. Your mind becomes sensitized around anything that you feed it with. Then you start to see it. You start to see it manifest. Because that's all you're thinking about. That's all that you're conversing. That's all that you're believing. That's all there is. What do you want the Lord to do for you today? Confess it. Declare it. Believe it. Say it. And the same tongue that can build is the same tongue that can destroy. So be careful of the things that come out of your mouth. Don't be saying things like, I'm not a violation. I'm not a... And then, you know, I always tell my husband, when I first met, met my husband as a boyfriend, every time people would greet him, he would say, yo, King Azam is ning. And I remember, because at that time, my girl was still, you know, charming my way, so I couldn't be like, <laughs> I don't want to push him away. But I was very disturbed by that because I was like, then how do you expect your problems never to finish? Because that's what you keep confessing with your mouth. And to date, he knows, we don't play with our tongues. I don't play with the tongue on that anymore. Because in 2022, we're going away. And along the way, we start talking about, because it was dark at night, we start talking about getting a pancha. And then we get it. And then after fixing it, the, the, the driver says, imagine if, if while we still drive, we get another one. And then we go, yo, imagine. And then guess what? We get another one. Why? We imagined it. And then we said it. Don't, don't come here and tell me about coincidence. On this channel, we don't believe in coincidence. We believe that everything happens and works out for you good. To them that love the Lord. Everything that happens has to happen. God has allowed it to happen, okay? You don't believe in coincidence. 2023, I'm so late for something. They call me, Matema, how far are you? And I go, something happened to my car. I'm here with my husband. I'm going to be there in a few moments. They're fixing my car. 
I get there. On my way back, my husband says, don't forget the nappies. I see, oh yeah, I can just U-turn here. It was a legal U-turn. I legally U-turn. Out of nowhere, a speeding bike. That guy was speeding from Mars. <laughs> he goes, Psh! he jumps from the left side of the car, the passenger side, drops the, he jumps, he jumps across the car. I can literally see that guy in slow motion. He jumps, lands on my right, right here. Now, here's a, a very important statement that my sister mentioned earlier on. She said, your reaction confirms what you've always been looking for. Oh, that was very powerful. That was big. Because my reaction immediately went, damn, no way. My reaction goes, oh my word, I did anticipate this. I actually spoke it. Oh my word, and it's really happening. My sister said, if that was not your focus for the day, if it happens, you're gonna go, oh my word, oh my God, are you okay? You understand? Because your reaction confirms what you've always been looking for. In other words, the way your mind has so much power. Hey, did someone steal around our area now? Because now they've just been dramatic. <laughs> I immediately go, oh my gosh, I remember saying this in the afternoon. No, this can't be happening. It happened. We, we jokingly say things a lot. We take our words for granted. We take the power that is our tongue for granted. I'm saying this again. It doesn't matter what they say, open quote. It doesn't matter what they say, including God, until you say it, close quote. It doesn't matter. And this might offend you because you really think that um, God will come down from heaven be next to your room and say, no, you are going to be fine, my child. That's, that's when you are like, maybe it's in the morning and you don't want to get up and you think your life is a miserable thing. People are happy and then there's you and then people are doing this and then, and then when your life is a living hell and then nothing is going your way and then you think he'll come down. Take that process of, of negative thinking and confirmations and, and then take them out for you. No, because the power of life and death, it lies in your tongue. That's what the scripture says. It doesn't lie in your pastors. It lies in your tongue. If you say it, you will be it. If you think about it, you will become it. I'm done. How, how, how long did I do this? It sounds like I've been speaking for six minutes. This is 21 minutes. What? <laughs> Thanks, my love. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Can you please pass me that book? There's a prayer there that I want to make. The, 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 yeah. Thank you. My advice before I close. Be weary. Con, be, be con, be. Be careful. Of the things you consume because you will become them be careful of the things you say because you will become them be careful of the things you believe because you've heard the Bible says faith comes by hearing so does doubt <laughs> so does they all come by what you're consuming so if you want to hear positivity, then listen to positivity. If you want to hear about marriages that work, then listen to marriages that work. If you want to hear about businesses that boom, listen to businesses that boom. Don't be all over the place, yet your focus is on that. Okay, so I wrote a little prayer here, very quick prayer, um, that I would want us to make together. Let's pray. God, I praise you that my steps are ordered by you. My God, you shall supply all my needs. I praise you for favor. 
I remain joyful for I know that he who began a new thing in me shall complete it. As you said in the word in the book of Psalms 141 verse 3, set a guard over my mouth. Transform me into a new person by changing the way I think as Romans 12 2 says. Help me guard my thoughts. Teach me. Train me to speak positive. Train me. Teach me to believe in the words that come out of my mouth. And from now on, help me not take for granted a scripture that says, the power of life and death lies in my tongue. In Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things that we do with our kids is um, declarations. And they change every day. I think um, Ethan sometimes wakes up and even on that day he feels, sometimes he just doesn't feel like going to school. So he'll say, Mama, I don't have energy. And I say, if you don't have energy, what do you want? I don't want to be strong. Then I'm like, that's the declaration, baby. So say, I am strong. And then he'll go, I am strong. And you will see his face lift because subconsciously, what comes out of here automatically, it is synthesizer. Oh, now we are strong now. We are, you see, these things just work together. They, guys, yo, I wish people knew just how powerful their words are and just how powerful our minds are. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next week.